Welcome to That Will Never Work Podcast. You're listening to Women Empowerment Wednesday. I am your host, Coach LaToya. You can reach me on my website at www.coachingbylatoya.com. Also on Facebook, Coaching by LaToya. And on Instagram, at Life Coach LaToya. So if anything resonates with you or you just want to send a message and you want to say, Hey, I like the episode or you have an idea of an episode that you want me to talk about, definitely send me a message. Be glad to hear from you. All right, let's get into today's show. Well, thank you so much for joining me today. I am honored to introduce to you a man who has his hands in some everything, Mr. (laughs) Antoine Maurice King. How are you? Hey, what's going on? How are you? I am great. So there is a lot of things that I looked into and I want to get into some of everything. But before we do that, what did you want to be when you were little? Wow. Um, that's a good question. Um, I wanted to be a doctor, actually. Really? Yeah. Um, that Because my mom was a nurse and um, I used to see like the stuff around the house, the the thermometers and all that the, and um, I used to pick them up and play with them and I used to tell her that I wanted to be a doctor so um, that ended when I when I went to college and I just thought science like it was all easy to me but I just thought it was boring so I ended up not staying with that major okay yeah. and you switched to which major business all right it's about making yeah. the money. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's just about making the money. I guess you can do that and take that anywhere. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I, you had mentioned when we talked um, a couple of days ago about mm-hmm. um, personal training. Do you? Yeah. How did you get into that? Um. Well, I was always into fitness. Like my my mom was um into fitness when we was growing up and um she used to have all this she used to buy all those equipment that you would see three o'clock in the morning those little workout things <laughs> right the information. She, yeah <laughs> she would buy all those things and she would bring them home and like and i would be the one using them because she never used them so <laughs> <laughs> yeah so that's kind of what got me into working out and then i was into martial arts too so oh um, do yeah, so I, yeah, so I was, my brother was into martial arts, so we, you know, we were into that together, and um, I got into fitness, and that, that's basically, fitness and music is my life, so those are things, all those things I've been doing since I was a kid, so, yeah, so, I mean, the opportunity came for me to get a job after I, I got certified as a trainer, and then um, I got a really good position working with this company called... Uh, American Leisure, um, they, I know people might not shun, people might shun Trump now, but I used to work in the Trump buildings in Manhattan, so mm-hmm. I used to work with a lot of different celebrities and like newscasters and actors and stuff like that that lived in the building because um, American Leisure was a private company and um, it was based in the Trump building uh, on the first floor, so Mm-hmm. everyone that lived in the building would use the gym. Right. So, and I worked for American Leisure, so I would train the people that lived in the, the different Trump building. It wasn't just one Trump building. It was a bunch of different buildings. And then there was another building on um, 54th Street, um, which I trained people to. So, yeah. So, that's basically how I got into training. Okay. So, yeah. you are no longer training. No. So what happened next from training? Well, while I was training, um, I used to work in this building on 54th Street. It's called the DeMarc Building. And um, I had an idea to create a media company, uh, basically a magazine, a print magazine. Mm -hmm. And um, a guy by the name of Paul Boyer, he lived in that particular building. And he just happened to work for 50 Cent. He was run a, running one of 50 Cent's companies. And my coworker used to see me every day. And he'd be like, you trying to start this magazine thing or whatever, you should 
talk to him. Mm-hmm. And and I was like, yeah, whatever, whatever. You know, he probably, you know, uh, wouldn't want to talk to me or whatever. So, like, a few couple of weeks went by. I was seeing him. And I would just see the guy and I would be, like, saying hi or whatever. And um, he he was really friendly. So I was like, you know what? He seems like he's approachable. Mm-hmm. So I, I approached him one day. Uh, he was getting on the elevator at the same time as me. And uh, I said, hey, man, you know, I'm starting this media company or whatever. And, um, you know, uh, I would like to do an interview with you. And he was like, sure, no problem. Come to the office. And his office was basically 50, in 50 cents office. Oh, oh nice. <laughs> yeah. So the, like the next day or two, I was in 50 cents office with Paul Boyer, who was running one of his company. Wow. So, yeah. So, I, so we did the interview and I was like, man, I got to try to take advantage of this situation because, mm-hmm. you know. Um, this could be a life changing situation or whatever. So I asked him, I said, you know, I'm doing this magazine and I I had a friend at the time. I had just met a guy by the name of uh, Joel Ortiz. Okay. And Joel Ortiz had just signed with Dr. Dre. You ever heard of Dr. Dre? Yeah. Yeah. Joel Ortiz had just signed a record deal with Dr. Dre and he was a friend of mine. So I said, man, so I'm the type of person, like, I was always good with puzzles, so I put different things together, Mm -hmm. and I said, you know, um, maybe I could get Joel Ortiz to do a photo shoot with 50 Cent's clothing line, G-Unit clothing. This is when 50 Cent used to have the the G-Unit clothing line. Right. So I was like, so I called up Joel, and Joel was like, "Um, yo, yeah, I I just signed with Dre. And Dre is, was working with 50 Cent also. So it kind of just made sense. Mm-hmm. So um, I called up Joel and, and we did the photo shoot. And um, I did it for the magazine and film. So um, we were able to get some footage. And then after that, we started posting that footage online and posting pictures with 50 Cent. And the media company just kind of took off after that. You wow. know what I mean? Um yeah, I got. Uh, I worked with Nicki Minaj for four years, and I worked with DJ Khaled, and um, I worked with Bun B and um, LL Cool J, and um, a lot of a lot, a lot, a lot of people. <laughs> really, seriously, just all kind of things. So you work yeah. with them as far as what um, with uh, well, your I magazine? Do, I, do, and... I do marketing. Okay, I do marketing, digital media. So. Um, I would set up publicity, interviews, um, uh, I do social media campaign, social media advertising, uh, you know, like I run people's ads and stuff like that. And, that yeah, is, so, yeah, oh, go ahead, I'm sorry. Yeah, all that digital stuff. That's what I want to get into, for sure, <laughs> for sure. So, mm. first, so, now you transitioned, you, you started with, um... You're no longer doing the training. You're doing your your digital marketing business and things like that. Uh, media, yeah. Media. So now, how did you even? That was just an idea, and it just changed. So now you went to school for business. Did you add some extra stuff, or like, did you where you take more classes, or you just knew how to put things together? Well, I, I ended up going back to school online. And um, I got my bachelor's in um, technology, uh, information technology, and then my master's in um, technology management. So I did it alone because, you know, um, I would get in a room with certain people, successful people, and it seemed like the fact that I didn't have a degree, like, they would kind of hold it against you. Like, you don't, you don't have a, you know what I mean? Because right. uh, I had a, I had a degree in business, but it was an associate's degree in business. Okay. So, um, but I knew, I knew how to, I'm just a natural entrepreneur. Good. You know, some, you, you can't just, you know, it ain't, not anybody could do what I did. Right. Exactly. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. I'm just a natural born entrepreneur and I had to realize that when I was, you know, for myself, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Because I, I know how to put things together in a way that a lot of people don't know how to do it. Gotcha. 
And um, yeah, so that's just, I mean, that's just how it is. <laughs> right, you're right. And, but yeah. you know, I think that is a, a struggle when you have the know-how, but when people hold things against you for their credential, it's like, really? Okay, so now I got to go back to school to get these credentials so that you'll look twice my way to do what I already know how to do. Exactly. And and that's what doesn't make sense. I already, you already know that I'm good at what I do, but you're not going to put me in this position because I don't have a master's degree. You know what I mean? Right. Like you already know. Yeah, yeah. So exactly. I, I did it anyway. So I said, you know what? It's not a problem. Going to going to school for me is nothing. Like I was studying medicine. Like right. this, is, this is this is easy. <laughs> <laughs> Just something else to knock on the belt. That's all. All right, I got yeah. it. Yeah, 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 yeah. So yeah, so I, I went. Um, so I was. I got into a lot of different things. Um, so we started out as a print magazine, and then we went digital, and everything was pretty much digital and. Um, I had a couple of people on my team that were very talented. Mm-hmm. So when I met, so when I met Fifty, um, I said, "Joe, I had an idea to do a, a cartoon animation making fun of him." Okay. And I, I went to my friend who's a uh, who does cartoon animations, and um, he did it, and um, we put it online, and Fifty put it on his site. He thought it was funny. Uh huh. And he had, 50 Cent has a, a website called thisis50.com. Mm-hmm. So he put it on the website and it went viral. It did like 100,000 views in one week. Oh, wow. Yeah. So, um, and we started doing more animations with celebrities. Uh-huh. And all our animations and stuff went viral. Oh, cool. Yeah. And then I, I, I got an interview with Nicki Minaj and um, I was talking to Nicki. I, just like this on a podcast. We, uh-huh. we have a podcast. We have a podcast too, and but this was back when I when I talked to Nikki. This was back in two thousand and eight. I did an interview with Nikki, and um, I asked her a question, and she got upset at me, and she hung up on me. Oh, and yeah, and um, do you know the website Worldstar? Yeah, Worldstar got a hold of the interview because I sent it to him. <laughs> <laughs> And they put it up there, and it went viral. And um, so, so we were doing all of these different things around the time between 2008 and 2010. We were doing all of these different things, and everything was going viral. Everything, wow. everything, hundreds of thousands. Yeah, hundreds of thousands of views. I was like, "Yo, let's do this cartoon with Lil Wayne." We put it online. Boom! It went viral. Uh-huh. I was like, "Yo, you know what I mean?" So, yeah. It was a bunch of, it was like synergy. It was like a bunch of things that worked together that made us get popping. You know right. what I mean? It was, it just, it was, it was meant to be, that's all. Like, I, I mean, you can't even, well, like you, you can't even really, do, you can't make it up. It's, it was just something that happened along the way. Like, you know, cause people always ask me like, how'd you do that? How'd you, and I said, you know what? I know how to. I know how to take advantage of the moment and that when, when you're put in a situation, you got to know how to take advantage of it. Like if you run into 50 cent on the street and you don't approach him about business, that's your fault. Right. That's your mistake. That's right. your mistake. Right. You know what I mean? So when, when you're put in a position, you got to be able to take full advantage of it. So when I met 50, I was like, yo, um, I'm going to do something for, I'm going to do something for him, but I'm going to make fun of him. And then I'm going to post it. And he liked it. Right. And you know what I mean? So I just took advantage of that situation and everything just fell together. And we started doing work with, so now, you know, every day I work with the different labels and stuff like that. And well, so, yeah. Just like you said, you know how to put puzzles together and a puzzle is life. Just putting together uh, situations as you come, as opportunity presents itself, you're ready. Yeah. And that is the spirit of an entrepreneur. You got to stay ready. Yeah. Yeah. That's what I'm you, you, Yeah. It's, and it was just natural for me to do it. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's not like I had to really think about it. I was like, yo, I met 50. I got to take advantage of it. Right. I met DJ Khaled. I got to take advantage of it. I met Nikki. I got to take advantage of it. You know what I mean? So. Right. And, it, and, and with Nikki, I knew I, I had known Nikki for like two years. And I knew that she didn't like to talk about other women. 
Mm-hmm. So I knew when we did our podcast interview, because we did a couple with her, but this the last one is the one where she hung up on me, and that's the one that went viral. But um, I, what, what I knew was if I brought up another female rapper, I knew she would get upset. And that was my fault, too, because maybe I shouldn't have done it because it kind of messed up my relationship with her. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I think so. <laughs> yeah, but at the same time, I was like, you know, like if I stir up some trouble, maybe we we might go viral or something again. Ah, so, there you go. Yeah, so I, I brought up the other female um, who who she didn't like, and I said, hey, you know, and then she hung up on me. And I was like, this could be good and bad. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so I sent it to Worldstar. They loved it. They posted it, and it went viral, and... You know, we and, and we for years I was on her Wikipedia page. Really? Yes, for years because they were like, "Oh, Nicki Minaj hung up on State Magazine because they had <laughs> <laughs> she she had a section on her Wikipedia page that talk about all her beef that she had with other females." Oh, rappers. stop! Yeah, and I was on her Wikipedia page for years. I don't, I don't, I might still be there. They might have, they might have removed it because of she, she's done so many big things since then. Right, right. So maybe they ain't even have room to put that anymore. But, <laughs> but for years, people were contacting me like, ah, she hung up on him, you know. Yeah. But anyway. Well, wait a minute. So yeah. going back to, so when did you start your podcast? Um. Okay. So this is one thing about me. Like I always think I had. Mm-hmm. So I when I when around 2006 when they when people started doing podcasts, I said, "Man, this thing is gonna be big," you know, because um, everybody had a you know everybody was doing the cell phone thing, and I'm like, I said, "Watch, this thing is gonna catch on," mm-hmm. you know, and and this is gonna. So I I, I said when I started my my company, I was like, I'm gonna make three different parts. I'm going to make a video division, which is state TV. I'm going to do a podcast division, which is the podcast. And I'm going to do the digital magazine, which is the website. So I had state TV, state radio, and state magazine. And the reason why I did that, because I said, if one of them fail, I always have the other one that, that that I could get popping. Right, right. And, and and I'm lucky that I did that because as time went on, blogs started to die, just like print magazine. Now now blogs are dead. Right. Blogs are dying out because of social media, because of everybody has a blog basically because of Facebook and Instagram. Now everybody has one. Right. You know what I mean? So blogs have died out. So now podcasting is a big thing, but my podcast is, I, I launched my podcast back in 2007. So one of my, my my podcast is one of the top hip hop podcasts in the country now. So we have like over two hundred and fifty episodes. Wow! Like that. And yeah. that's and the name of it was Spate. Spate Radio. Spate Radio. Yeah. Ah, oh, that's what I'm talking about. So and yeah. how and what about your digital magazine? How did that go? Um. Well, that's always been there. You know. Um. I started that like, yeah, like um, I said, I'm, I launched them all pretty much at the same time. And my magazine, like people are always, I'm partners with um, Reverb Nation. You ever heard of Reverb Nation? Yes. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm partners with Reverb Nation. So what happens is um, they 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 uh, artists submit music because I don't accept music directly to my email. Mm-hmm. So artists submit their music through Reverb Nation. And, Re- and Reverb Nation is like my aggregator and um, I uh, listen to the music on Reverb Nation and then I pick every like month or so I pick like five people from Reverb Nation mm-hmm. and, and Reverb Nation promotes them by sending out like an email blast to like three million people and then I promote them on my website and um, so they get a lot of promotion for free and but these are only like artists that I select. Right. Like, yeah. Okay. So, so yeah, so that's what, as far as my digital magazine, that's something that, that's going on with that. Got you. 
but it's still filtering in to your podcast, your news, the hip hop news, so you can stay on trend and keep up with what's going on in the streets. Yep. Gotcha. See, you just mm-hmm. truly an entrepreneur spirit. You were right about that. So, bes- <laughs> <laughs> learning a lot. So, besides <laughs> the um, the issue with like people expecting you to have that degree. What are the obstacles or challenges did you face? Well, um, this happened actually maybe what before I got my bachelor's. Um, I wanted to get a position as an executive at a major entertainment company because I feel like I earned it. Because mm-hmm. I created my own company and I worked with the superstars. I didn't just work with anybody. I worked with superstars. Mm-hmm. So, but I will go to these companies and I'll, and these are people that are my friends, like people in the industry, like I, I know them and they'll be like, um, oh yeah, you did that, but you don't have a college degree. We're going to hire this person who has a college degree for that, you know? And at the time I did have a degree, but I only had an uh, associate's degree. Mm-hmm. So, um, I felt like people were kind of discriminating against, I don't know if that's the right word. I feel like, um. People would, because they felt like I wasn't able to do the job. Yeah. They felt like because I didn't have a bachelor's degree that I wouldn't be able to do the job. And um, so I said, you, and, and, and the funny thing is people, sometimes people, when you don't have a degree, they think that you can't do it. Right. Yes. So I'm like, I don't have a bachelor's degree because I can't do it. I have a bachelor's degree because I chose not to go to school. Right. You know what I mean? Right. There's people that can't do it because they can't read. You right. know what I mean? But I'm not one of those people. So I said, you know what? I'm going to go back and get my degree. And and then even after I got my bachelor's, I would be put in, I was put in positions where people were worth a hundred million dollars. Mm-hmm. And, pe- and I would, I would be in a room with people that are worth 50 million and they'll look at me like I'm a loser. Got you. And I, I, I had a bachelor's degree. So I'm like, damn, I'm like, I'm right. still a loser. Right, right. I'm doing what you look for. I'm still not good enough. And I know what I'm doing. Oh but, man. But, but but you know there's level. Yes. Like I could go I could go to a room with a bachelor's degree in my company and I and people look at me like, yo, you're a big dog. Right. But then I'll go to a room with people full of a hundred people that are worth a hundred million dollars and then they'll be like, You a loser. Right. Right. <laughs> Got you. <laughs> Gosh. You know what I'm saying? Yes. So I said, damn, I gotta step it up again. I gotta get my masters. <laughs> <laughs> and once I hit the masters, then the millionaires are looking at me like, okay, that's a little better. Wow. <laughs> See, those credentials mean a lot. So for anybody who's second guessing, well, maybe I don't need to go because I already know what I'm doing. Uh, those credentials get you in certain rooms is basically what you say and they not looking at you funny they looking exactly. at you like oh you can hang with us you can hang with the cool kids and yeah. but this is where the money is too so yeah imagine having a conversation with someone like um, Bill Gates and telling them you got an associate's degree in business you know what I mean <laughs> <laughs> he gonna be like you got a name who let this person in <laughs> He's going to be like, why am I talking to you? <laughs> right. Why? Right. Get out of my face. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> wow. No, but that's just the way. It, you know, I had to, I had to learn from experience. Right. I had to, I had to experience it. Like, there was, there was rooms that I would go in, and people would just be looking at me with this face. Like, why are you here? Who are you? Right. You know what I mean? Right. You know, and and you don't, and you like, damn, I gotta step my game up. I'm a loser <laughs> compared to them. Right. Well, wait, I got a question on top of that. So, in these rooms, it's primarily men. Um, uh, let me think. Um, no, not necessarily. No. I mean, there's a their wives. <laughs> <laughs> I got you. I got you. It's, I think too, it's like you have, when it comes to women, and you have women who, first of all, 
when if they had the know how and they had the entrepreneur spirit like yourself, they would probably get the same thing as far as a degree. Like you can't be in here with us because they're going to find something. Because sometimes I feel like when it's a room of men, women are already second class citizens. Because they're looked at, you know, sometimes, depending on the group that you're in, like when you have an older crowd or, you know, to figure out what they think women's roles should be. And, oh, go ahead. It depends on what business you're talking about. In my business and entertainment, black women run entertainment. Okay. So, in my business, I see a lot of black women. So, I can't really say that for, but maybe in, in technology, that might be different. Maybe in a different field, it might be different. But when it comes to entertainment, African-American women run um, uh, most, a lot of the executives in entertainment, um, very successful women, and, and they're black. So, Oh, all right. Yeah. yeah. So, but the IT field, not so much. Say it again? But in the IT field, it's not as many. No, not in the IT field, no. Okay, okay. So then basically there's a need for us to be up in there. We need yes. to go get in there. And yes, then... because the starting starting pay for IT is like starting at like one twenty five. So they're, they're 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 high paying jobs and we're talking about entry level jobs at like one twenty five. Wow. So they're high paying jobs and we need more people of color in those positions. You know what I mean? But a lot of people don't like technology. I don't know why, but um, we need people in those positions, definitely. That's, that's one of the reasons why I'm there, really. Well, for sure. And especially yeah. with this situation now with the shelter in place, it's like we are heavily uh, relying on technology to get us through each day. Even yeah. businesses are, you know, having as many people work remotely. So you're mm-hmm. dependent on that. And then uh with these devices, social media, which you got on me about that, I'm going I'm gonna beef up my presence on social media. I'm gonna do better. Um uh, but <laughs> <laughs> but that is exactly where it's at. Mm-hmm. Yeah it is. It is. Everything is social media right now. And oh my yeah. goodness. So even uh, when it comes to music, like TikTok is like the hottest place to promote music right now. You're right. You're yeah. right. Yeah. So, like, if you don't have music, if you're a musician and you don't, and your song is not popping on TikTok, then you're not you're not doing nothing right now. You, you got a point there. You <laughs> got a point there. Oh my goodness. Um, you have a daughter. Yes. So, what do you yeah. tell your daughter about entrepreneurship, or do you you push that, or no, or? Well, she's um studying medicine and um. And she's um she she's she just recently started her little like YouTube channel and she does like makeup videos. So mm-hmm. um that's gonna that's what, what she does and she and I help her with the videos and editing and, and putting them on social media and I'm so I'm showing her how to market her videos and on social media but she's a student and she's she's trying to do her her influencer thing too. Okay. I see. Yeah. That's nice. Well, see, first of all, it's great to have a dad that can help you do those things because a lot of us <laughs> don't know. Just like you said, a lot of us don't know about social media. And I think it's definitely a younger generation thing who can do it in their sleep. It's just us in the middle. I'm yeah. one of the middle people. <clears throat> but, uh, <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, this was great. Look, I got to bring you back too because, um, I don't want to hold up all your time. I do have two questions for you. Number one, I mm-hmm. try to give my listeners a little homework assignment, just something to work on themselves. And mm-hmm. I'm going to let you give that homework. So for any uh, women entrepreneurs out here who are maybe afraid of social media, is there any homework you have for them? Oh, definitely. Um, you have to... You don't have to start like big. You can like start with just. Um, it depends on what they want to do. If they want to build an audience on social media and be like an influencer, is that what it is? Right. Yeah, they want to be an influencer. Yes. Okay. So, um, just start with posting pictures, but 
the thing about social media is um, these social medias have something called an algorithm. Mm -hmm. And the algorithm responds to activity. So what happens is, let's say you have 100 followers. Mm -hmm. And um, you post a picture. If you post a picture every day, they're going to show that picture to more of your followers. And if people like it, then you're going to get a positive reaction, right? right. And then they're going to they're gonna show that picture to more people. And then it's just going to grow like that. And that's how the algorithm is. So if the homework assignment would be post a picture every day. Post one picture every day, you know. Okay. Um, and if you can't do it every day, do it once every two days. Okay. And um, just to get the algorithm going, to get people liking the pictures, and to show that you're consistent, because um, the algorithm also responds to people logging on and being active with other people. So, I got you. Yeah, so be consistent and consistent. post something every day or every two days. Gotcha. Consistency is the key. You hear that all the time. Same thing with posting. Yeah. Awesome. And my next question is, do you have a mantra for your life? A what? A mantra. Like something that you tell yourself to get yourself through the day. A mantra. Um, I have like a, a routine that I do. You know, I I get up and I tell myself like every day that money is going to come into my life very easily. Um, I'm very successful. Yeah. I love, I love myself. I don't have a problem making money. My, my family is healthy. Every morning I get up, I tell myself that. And yeah, that's something that I do. I like it. That's you removed all the money blocks. Like, look, money is coming to me every day. I love that. Yeah. Um, I also love your tagline on your, um, one of your IG pages, Mr. Social believe, Media. Believe and take action. Yes. yes. Yeah, that's mine. That's, that's mine right there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> I love it. I do love yeah. it. Um, yeah. I have a, my daughter's wearing a t-shirt right now that says believe and take action. I love that. I said, okay. All right. That's what I'm yeah. talking about. Yeah. And... Last thing, state your media handles for anybody who want to reach out or just check out with your t-shirts. How about that? <laughs> yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, I recently started um, designing stuff, so you can check that out at my Instagram page at Antoine Maurice King. And um, that's at Antoine Maurice King. And then um, you could also check out uh, my media stuff. It's Spate Hip Hop News on Instagram. Yeah, Spate Hip Hop News. And... Um, Oh, you can check out the website, spadehiphopnews.com. And uh, I guess that's pretty much it. Nice. I'm going to make sure that's in the description, too, on this podcast. You have been awesome. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much. We're going to keep in touch for sure. Yes. Definitely. <laughs> All right.